Hey guys, Rambo here with another Dead Ops or K3 video, where I'll be going over some of the changes made to the game in January and February of this year. It is worth noting that for most of the February updates, there were official patch notes released for DOA3 on Treyarch's website, but some people might not know what some of those changes mean, so I figured I'd make this video and go over them in detail. Also, there were some changes made in February which are not included in the patch notes. Furthermore, there are some things listed in the patch notes which are not actually patched yet, so I think this video will be a bit more accurate than reading the patch notes. But but again, it is possible that I omit or am incorrect about a couple things as well in this video. Anyways, timestamps will be in the description below for the different updates, let's get right into it. With the January 6th update, Operator skins were now able to be applied to DOA matches, rather than being limited to using just the default skin of your characters. Addressed a couple of exploits, including one on the Bloodpool Arena where you could exit FPS mode while boosting up the waterfall, which would put you into an invincibility spot. That's it for January 6th, now we're on to another small update on January 20th. If players join a match mid-game, but weren't there at the very beginning of the match, they will now be considered ineligible to earn the Pristine Pelt Dark Ops Challenge. When players join a match that is already in progress in later rounds, they now spawn in with zero nukes rather than one nuke. Address the bug where if you grab the FPS drop while a teammate entered a dungeon, you would be put in first person mode while in that dungeon. That wraps up the short list of January updates, now we're on to the much longer list of February updates. With the February 4th update, a new mode called Solo Advanced Start was added. This playlist option allows players to start at their highest arena checkpoint reached in Solo. So let's say your highest round on Solo is 42, it will then start you at the beginning of that arena, or round 41. No stats or colon card challenges will register for this mode, but achievements like Reunited with Fidelina can be completed. For more information on this mode, you can check out this video of mine, which will be linked in the description below. A new item pickup called the Divine Shield Potion was added. When this item is grabbed, you will have an orange aura around your player, which will allow you to absorb one damage hit without dying. Once you get hit, your orange aura around you will disappear, and it will give you a brief brace period as well to avoid being double hit. Then you're back to normal after that. This effect has a 30 minute expiration if the damage shield is never used in that time window. After round 64, life donations on co-op become forced, rather than solely optional. Like in previous DOA games, the player with the highest lives to spare will typically donate to downed players and bring them back to life. This life donation system has a cooldown of 2 minutes, and there's also a 2 life safeguard implemented, which prevents your lives from being donated when you're at 2 or fewer lives. Remove the Skeleton King boss from possibly appearing on the More Mouse to Feed underboss battle on rounds 125, 189, etc. Since you are in top down view on these rounds, it was very difficult to have your bolts connect and do damage to the skeleton. Added some lighting in the Room of Fate for the stones that are located at the very bottom and very top of the map. Added a new camera mode titled Extra High, which of course lets you see more of the map when compared to the other camera settings. Added a new possible key spawn location to the tunnel route over here by the Blightfather. When taking damage in first person, you now have 1.5 seconds of invulnerability before you could be damaged again, which prevents players from being quickly triple slapped in first person mode. Made a slight adjustment to multiplier progression. This is listed in the patch notes, I'm not 100% sure what it entails. I think it's possibly easier to get to a 2 times multiplier with your gems after taking a death, but again, not too sure about this. Addressed an issue that would prevent players from being awarded a fate if they chose their stone in the room fate when the room was about to expire. There were a number of buffs made to the skeleton army item drop, as the friendly skeletons now have increased health, greater quantity of skeletons, longer time duration, and greater weapon damage against zombies, as their melee damage was previously not registering properly against enemies. Address an issue where the player was sometimes not able to toggle on the flashlight in first person mode. Address an issue with the shotgun weapon, where the red and purple versions of the gun were not firing as quickly as they should have. Address an issue with some collision in the afterlife arena, where you would previously get stuck by these steps. Address an issue in split screen mode, where players would enter the wild in shared viewport mode rather than having their screen split in half. Various exploit areas were patched up, such as this spot on the stairs of the Mama's House Arena, which granted invincibility. There were also a couple other similar spots patched up as well. Address an issue where the player's invincibility shield was active, even though the visual effect for it was not visible. Fix the bug where extra lives were sometimes not being properly awarded at exactly the 200,000 points threshold. Fix the bug where the friendship chicken would sometimes get stuck outside the map while transitioning to or from a bonus area. Fix the bug where control bindings for armory would glitch out after exiting vehicles when playing on flipped controls. Potential fix for a bug where the SAM turret missiles would sometimes kill players. 
Potential fix for a bug where your chicken could kill you with friendly crossbow bullets while it was spinning at the end of its cycle. Possible fixes for issues where various particle effects would have visibility issues in later rounds. So particle effects such as the red medic symbols, FPS blood splatter, and teddy bear rings. There were also a number of changes which nerfed different enemies in the game. The Megaton enemy that appears after round 65 now has reduced melee distance, in addition to having a reduced spawn rate and reduced health as well. Additionally, the Megaton's blue orb attack is no longer a one-hit kill during normal rounds. Nosferatus are now exclusive to deadly dungeons, as they no longer appear as recurring enemies after round 64. Fix the bug where spiders would not properly appear on the minimap, the symbol over here is now their current icon on the radar. Fix the bug where explosive damage versus spiders and meeples did not register correctly. Greatly reduce the melee range of spiders. Address an issue that allowed the jumping gladiator enemy to melee kill the player even while it was facing the opposite direction. Address an issue where zombies could speed up from Nova Gas while under the force field clock effect. And finally, after round 64, enemy target selection behavior is now weighted entirely towards proximity rather than on load balance. Previously with the load balance mechanic, the enemies would sort of be assigned to different players on the map, unless someone got really close to them and drew their attention towards them. There were also quite a few buffs to the fates in the game. Players with Divine Chalice now earn extra lives every 125,000 points, rather than the typical 200,000 points. Divine Chalice players now respawn with a temporary vitality buff, where they have the fast boots pickup for a total of 25 seconds after they respawn from a death. Divine Shield players now respawn with a Divine Shield potion after taking a death. As mentioned earlier, this potion will allow you to absorb one damage event, and you'll now get it after every time you take a death with this fate. There were also some post round 64 benefits introduced for fates, which is a first in the DUA series. After round 64, when a Divine Shield player picks up a nuke on the map, all players in the match will be granted a nuke as well. It is worth knowing that this feature even applies in bonus areas. Friendship players now have their chickens last 25% longer than before, for a total of 2 minutes. I'm pretty sure it was 2 minutes before this update, but I guess we'll have to take the word of the official patch notes. The golden chicken associated with the Friendship Fate now periodically produces eggs in normal rounds, so your chicken will just poop out eggs from time to time. After round 64, the golden chicken associated with the Friendship Fate will now have permanently upgraded weaponry. For example, if you have a standard RPD equipped, your golden chicken will shoot red RPD bullets. And if you have a red weapon equipped as your primary, the golden chicken will then shoot purple bullets of that weapon. It is also worth noting that this feature of the fate also works in companion with the firepower fate, where your golden chicken will shoot red death machine bullets. There are about 10 additional changes made with this February 4th update, which were not listed in the patch notes. They are as follows. Many boss enemies, such as the six arm guy, werewolf, and margua, now properly award loot when killed on their respective underboss battles, which reverts back to an earlier update from December. Many boss enemies in the wild, and also on their underboss battles, no longer have a chance at dropping keys or armory. Instead, they now have a chance at dropping a mech vehicle, or even a divine potion. Added a sound effect when toggling your flashlight on or off. On round 65 to 68, and all recurring playthroughs of the island arena, fireballs are now launched at the player from the ship. On the throne room arena, or rounds 57 and 60, the fireballs now have slightly varied landing spots, in an effort to limit camping on this arena. Adjusted the fireball paths in the round 60 wild as well, where fireballs can land on this chest over here by the bats. Fix the bug where the magnet from Weston's trading post would sometimes last much longer than intended. You are now unable to flip your camera in this specific room of a deadly dungeon, the one which contains this structure which leads to a dark crypt bonus area. Previously, if you tried flipping your camera in this specific room, it would cause a bug where your controls were inverted. Skeletons in the wild now kill you in just one hit. In the boss fight, the mama back will use a series of jetpack attacks if she is receiving a high level of damage or if someone drops a nuke. A few changes were made to split screen, such as fixing a bug where player 2's camera was not visible when player 1 entered first person mode. Also removed the ability to split your screen in half while in the top down view for normal rounds. Now you will always share the same screen, unless you're in first person mode or the wild. And finally, this update added a reward for maxing out your 9x score multiplier, as you will be given a random fate when you do this. 
which is the only way in the game to bypass the two fate limit. This is something that has only been achieved once legitimately so far, so it's not really something that's going to concern many players. But if you want to learn more about this feature, you can check out this video of mine, which will be linked in the description below. As is the case with many large patches, there were a few wonky bugs introduced with the title update that were then addressed with a hotfix a couple days later on February 6th. This hotfix addressed an issue where spring pads sometimes disappeared in Silverback Slideways, and also the Mama's House Arena as well. Addressed an issue where the final flogger in this specific version of Silverback Slideways would disappear, and a fix for a similar issue where the flogger on the Gladiator Arena would sometimes disappear on later playthroughs as well. Address an issue where fireballs in Silverback Slideways and Deadly Dungeons had unintended changes in their trajectories. A couple of weeks after that, there was another rather large update for DOA 3 just as Season 2 was about to be released. The changes that were officially listed on the patch notes for this update include... Addressed a rare bug where the Margo would die as soon as you loaded into a deadly dungeon. Addressed various exploits in the game, such as one where the elephant in the wild would continuously respawn. Addressed an issue where the Divine Chalice and Divine Shield fates were not included as potential fate stones in Deadly Dungeons. Addressed an issue where spamming the Interact button could accidentally activate an object that was far away, such as accidentally spending a key on a big chest that was across the room. Addressed an issue where too many mini-bosses would spawn in on the More Mouse to Feed Underboss battle on rounds 125, 189, etc. Address the bug where the auto life donation system after round 64 would sometimes donate lives from multiple players at once. If you take a death on Silverback Slideways, it no longer registers as a death on the menu scoreboard. After players take a death, their gems now stop spilling once they finish their 5 second respawn, which allows them to keep a decent score multiplier after dying with a large multiplier. It also benefits the Divine Chalice fate, which allows players to respawn in 3 seconds instead of 5. So you'll typically keep more of your score multiplier after dying with this fate. Reduce the swipe distance of the Margro by 17%. With the fate of Fortune, also known as Blessings, most item pickups now last 80% longer, rather than just 40% longer. For example, Boxing Gloves normally last 30 seconds, with pre-patch fortune, they would last 42 seconds. And now, with the current patch fortune, they will last 54 seconds. Extra time was added to Wave 3 The Room of Judgment based on player count. For solo, you now have 15 extra seconds when compared to before. For two-player matches, you now have 10 extra seconds. And for three-player matches, you now have 5 extra seconds. The time allotted for four-player matches on Wave 3 remains the same. When playing the solo advanced start mode, the Room of Judgment should now always appear after round 65 complete. Previously, there was a chance you would hit a bonus room after round 65, which meant you could miss out on getting the Room of Judgment. For the solo advanced start mode, if you made it past the Room of Fate, you are now able to choose your fate at the beginning of the match, rather than being awarded a random fate when loading in. Here's a graphic to help you guys figure out which stone is associated with which fate. With the solo advanced start mode, depending on the level that you're starting at, you will now spawn in with more lives and armory than before the patch. For example, on round 61 specifically, you will spawn in with 5 lives, 5 speed boosts, and 4 nukes, rather than the default stat line of 3 lives, 2 speed boosts, and 1 nuke. There were also some additional changes with this update which were not included in the official patch notes from Treyarch. These changes include Increase the spawn rate of speed boosts, in addition to the color of the item now being silver instead of gold, presumably to indicate its change in rarity. Added two extra flashlights to the lock cage area at the beginning of the wild. It is worth knowing that you could enter this area without using a key, if you use a speed boost from the top of the lift. You can no longer pick up a flashlight if you already have one in your inventory. Deadly dungeons and cavernous cellar bonus areas now have drastically different lighting. Several geo changes were made to the volcano area in the wild, as it is a lot more narrow now, with less room to maneuver. You can't quite squeeze by certain objects like you were once able to. Also, with these geo changes, various speed boost shortcuts on the volcano no longer seem to work either. On round 65 to 68, and all following playthroughs of the island arena, the fireballs are now launched at the player less frequently and slower too. On the Mama's House arena, zombies can now jump down the stairs rather than always running down the stairs. On solo advanced start mode, whenever you game over, there is text which appears to indicate that you played your match using the solo advanced start mode. On the Smoke and Ruin challenge on round 21, normal zombies can now appear during the round, rather than there being exclusively shadow boogie enemies on this round. If you are playing with graphic content disabled, the zombies now have a greater chance at just totally disappearing after being killed, rather than their dead bodies always hitting the floor. Address exploits related to rejoining late into the game for the Reunited with Fidelina Trophy or Pristine Pelt Dark Ops Challenge. 
Fix the bug where exiting the mech vehicle in the Skeleton King boss area would glitch out your camera and put you into a glitchy top-down perspective. Some small changes were made to the color of various things on some maps, such as this side of the volcano having more red on it now with the recent update, or the boulder over here in the Winter Cave Arena having snow added to it. Also, the eye color of certain enemies, like the Warden and Skeleton King, sometimes are dynamic. Like, they'll sometimes have blue eyes now, but other times they don't. Not too sure what's up with that. Then there's another patch a day later, with the launch of Season 2 on February 25th. With this update, a first-person playlist mode was added for DUA, with leaderboard support for solos, duos, trios, and quads in this mode as well. For more information on this mode, you can check out this video of mine, which will be linked in the description below. With all the gameplay tuning and exploit fixes recently, there was also a full leaderboard reset performed for solo, duos, trios, and quads, though the career leaderboards remain unchanged. Also with Season 2 came the Dead Ops Arcade Reactive Bundle added to the store for Cold War, which includes a side-scroller reactive camo, which pays homage to both DUA 1 and 2, and the bundle also includes five other DUA-related items as well. And the final update covered in this video was a small hotfix released on February 26th, which quickly addressed a few of the issues introduced with the main Season 2 update. This hotfix addressed a bug where players with the Fate of Fortune would sometimes bleed down to a one-time score multiplier after death, despite one of the Fate's abilities being that you should always have at least a two-time score multiplier. And finally, this hotfix also addressed an issue for Cold War, where players on consoles would experience frame rate issues on DOA 3 and other game modes as well. Anyways, that about wraps up the video. If you found any of this info useful, don't forget to drop a like. Thanks for watching.